So Strictly Come Dancing, it takes two and a half an hour. Before that, on BBC Two and BBC HD, Professor Yaffle from Bagpuss, a carved wooden bookend. Would have been a wise old bird for today's challenges. These people are amongst the greatest quiz players in Britain. Together they make up the Eggheads, arguably the most formidable quiz team in the country. The question is, can they be beaten? Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. You might recognise them as they've won some of the country's toughest quiz shows. They are the Eggheads. And challenging our resident quiz champions today are the bookends. This team of former colleagues all worked at the same bookshop in Leeds until its closure in 2009. Let's meet them. Hello, I'm Gary, I'm 39 and I'm a supervisor in a bookstore. Hi, uh, my name's Mike, I'm 42 and I work as a deputy manager in a charity shop. Hello, my name's Gordon, I'm 37 and I'm a university administrator. Hello, I'm David, I'm 35 and I'm a primary school teacher. Hello, I'm Rob, I'm 38 and I'm a bookstore manager. So, uh, bookends, as I say, the uh, bookshop closed, so is this the, this is the team title here, bookends? Well, we, uh, there's two reasons for the name. Um, yeah, the end of the bookshop and also we, we bookend the store's life. Some of us were here at the beginning and some of us were here at the end. Ah, I see. So there's two, two reasons. So, uh, one category we're um, looking for, I suppose, arts and books. You'd think so, wouldn't you? Yeah. Quite to play that. <laughs> no one wants to play it. We're not sure yet. <laughs> no, exactly. I know you, we get a lot of people coming in, you know, and they're specialists in one subject or another, and of course you can uh, only expose your deficiencies, I suppose, yeah. playing on that subject. <laughs> uh, music's also big in many of your lives, aren't you? You take part in a music quiz. That's right. We uh, take, do a music quiz uh, every Thursday night in Leeds and we've had a 70% pass rate okay. uh, as winners. Music, arts and books, plenty of other subjects there though. Let's find out what the first one is. Every day there's £1,000 worth of cash up for grabs for our challenges. However, if they fail to defeat the eggheads, the prize money rolls over to the next show. So bookends, the challengers actually won the last game, proving it can be done. And that means, of course, £1,000 says you can't beat the eggheads. And our first head-to-head -head battle is on food and drink today. Food and drink to open this game. <laughs> Interesting. And Gordon okay. or Rob? Yeah. How yeah. do you feel about food and drink? Not great. You, okay. did, you did well the other day. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think. I'll have a go. Go for it. Okay, Gordon, Gordon, I think you should. I think so. Right. Gordon is going to take on food and drink. Right, Gordon, for this one. And which egghead do you want to take with you into the question room? Barry? I right. think that's good. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Leeds. Yeah. Leeds, yeah. Uh, Leeds that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, of Leeds course, connection. yes. Mm -hmm. Barry, the Leeds connection. Let's have um, Gordon and Barry into the question room then, please, just to make sure there's no conferring. Right, let's try and knock one of them out, please. Gordon, would you like to go first or second? Um, I'd like to go first, please. OK, good luck, Gordon. And your first question is this. Which dish consists of sausages cooked in Yorkshire pudding batter? Toad in the hole, fidget pie or lava bread? Um, that one is toad in the hole. Yes, it is, of course, yes. <laughs> toad in the hole, bit of Yorkshire pudding in there for you as well. OK, Barry, which two-word term often used as an expression of approval means thoroughly cooked when referring to meat? Spot on, good show or well done? Well, I hope this won't refer to me at the end of this round, but it's well done. <laughs> <laughs> Liking it, Barry. It's the right answer. Well done is correct. Gordon, second question. The moon and stars, so named for its dark green rind, spotted with bright yellow markings, is a variety of which fruit with the scientific name Citrullus lanatus? Is it watermelon, plum or kiwi fruit? Right. Um, I don't really know this one. I think a, a star fruit is very like a kiwi fruit. Um, so I, th I think I'll go for kiwi fruit. OK, the moon and stars going on that for kiwi. It's more of the dark green rind and the bright yellow markings on a watermelon. Watermelon, so a chance for the lead for Barry. The Italian term affogato, literally meaning drowned, is normally used to refer to a dish combining which two elements? Espresso and ice cream, brandy and tiramisu, or lemonade and sorbet. What a lovely word to describe a dish, drowned. The only one of those three that I think can be drowned is tiramisu, which is often drowned in brandy, so that's my guess. Well, answer. 
No, it's a guess, because it's wrong. <laughs> well, it was my answer as well. Yes. <laughs> Your guessing answer. It's espresso and ice cream. Ah. It's affogato. OK, well, no damage done, Gordon. Your third questions. The properties of Latache and Romane Conti produce some of the most expensive examples of which French wine? Champagne, Bordeaux or Burgundy? Right. Um, I haven't got a clue out of that. Um, I will we'll guess Burgundy. Good guess. It's the right answer. Hey. Well done. OK, you're in the lead. And Barry needs to get this. Stamp and Go is the name given to a dish of fish fritters native to where? New Zealand, Jamaica or Singapore? Stamp and Go. I don't think it's Singapore. Stamp and Go. Sounds a sort of laid-back thing, that, the way that they label a dish in the Caribbean, so I'll go for Jamaica. Fish fritters from Jamaica. It's the right answer, yes. Barry worked it out. OK. Well, Gordon, we go to sudden death and remove those options you've seen up to this point. There will be uh, not three choices there appearing for the remainder of this round. For either player, it's sudden death. Here you are. Thompson Seedless and Black Hamburg, a varieties of which fruit? Thompson Seedless and Black Hamburg, a varieties of which fruit? And um, Seedless would imply grapes. Yeah, I'm, I, I will guess grapes. Good guess, right answer. Well done, Gordon. <laughs> Thompson Seedless and Black Hamburg grapes. OK, Barry, Alaria Esculenta, known by various local names such as Badalox and Honeyware, is an edible form of what? I don't know, but Esculenta somehow is saying snail to me. But Badalox and Honeylox. Yeah, could be, I suppose, but that's the only thing that's come to my mind. I'm going to say snails. OK, uh, snails, Badalox and Honeyware. Bad, not Badalware and Honeylox, but uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's not the right answer. Other eggheads, do you know? Fungus. Seaweed, my friend. Fungus is getting closer, and seaweed is correct. Mm -hmm. Seaweed, Barry. Ah. Seaweed, Alaria Esculenta, which means you're in the final round, Gordon. Well done. <laughs> Would you both please come back and join your teams? Great start for the bookends. Gordon straight through into the final round and the eggheads have lost one brain in the form of Barry. And let's see what our next subject is. It's music. Who'd like to play this? I think it should be you, shouldn't yeah, it, really? It makes sense. Go on, That'll be me. All right, Gary, and <laughs> who'd you like to play from the eggheads? Just remember, it can't be Barry. Can't play Great. twice in the head-to-heads. I think yeah. so. He's not, he's because he doesn't like the model stuff, does he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Chris. Chris, OK, Gary and Chris playing this music round. Could I ask you both please to go to the question room? Gary, do you want to go first or second? Uh, I'd like to go first, please. OK, best of luck, Gary. Here's your first question. The singer Catherine Jenkins is best known for which musical genre? Jazz funk, acid house or classical crossover? Uh, she is a uh, classical crossover. Yes, indeed. Classical crossover for Catherine Jenkins. And one on the board. Chris, New Order were the group behind which World Cup song for the England football team in 1990? Vindaloo, World in Motion or Back Home? Well, it's not Vindaloo, because that was Fat Les. And I don't think it was Back Home either, so it's got to be World in Motion. World in Motion is the right answer. Yes, well done. And Gary, Mike Love became famous as one of the founder members of which group? The Beach Boys, The Birds or The Mamas and The Papas? OK, I think I know. I'm just going to take a second. I want to rush in. Mm. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was The Beach Boys. OK, yeah, right, not to rush in, but getting the right answer there. Yes, The Beach Boys, Mike Love. OK, well, Chris, second question. Which pop star calls her fans Little Monsters, a name that she has had tattooed on her arm? Is it Beyonce, Mariah Carey or Lady Gaga? I don't think Beyoncé's got any tattoos anywhere that are visible. Uh, don't think it'd be Mariah Carey either. The sort of thing Lady Gaga would do, so I'll say Lady Gaga. And, of course, you've got her tatt that tattooed on you, haven't you? No, I have not. I haven't got any tattoos at all. What, not even of any steam trains? No. <laughs> Maybe you just haven't looked close enough. Well, mate, I might have been born with a works plate in the small of my back or something, but uh, I haven't looked. <laughs> Little monsters are yeah. tattooed on the arm of Lady Gaga. It's the right answer. Well done. 
to all. Gary, who wrote the song Just Like a Woman, which became a UK top ten single in 1966 for Manfred Mann? Bob Dylan, John Lennon or Joan Baez? Um, again, I'm quite... Well, I know Bob Dylan sang it. But I don't know if Joan Baez wrote it. Um, but I'll go with my first instinct and say Bob Dylan. OK, Bob Dylan, right, sang it, but did he write it? Yes, he did. It's the right answer. Chris, which composer became a gentleman of the Chapel Royal under Elizabeth I, but had to flee the country under James I due to scandal and a charge of adultery? John Blow, Thomas Arne or John Bull? Well, Thomas Arne wrote Rule Britannia. He was later. Don't think it was John Bull. I think it was John Blow. And there's no joke involved there. John Blow. John Blow, mm -hmm. uh, composer under Elizabeth I, firstly, but uh, had to run off under James I. It's John Bull. Oh. It is John Bull, which means another member of the bookends is in the final round. Faultless performance there from Gary. Following Gordon into the final round, would you both please come back and join your teams? Well, bookends doing ever so well here. It's like a bookshelf has fallen on you eggheads at the moment. Uh, two brains missing from the final round so far. All the bookends are there. And our next subject, well, snap me, arts and books. Arts and books, who wants to play this? Now, only uh, Mike, David or Rob can play. Yeah, yeah. yeah. who should yeah, yeah. I take? How oh, who oh, oh, Rob's going to Rob's gonna play. OK, yeah. Rob, and from the eggheads, Barry and Chris have played, so you've got Pat, Judith or Daphne. Should we go, Pat? I think we'll be Pat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'll go with yeah. Pat. He's going to attempt uh, to take on Pat. OK, yeah. it's Rob and Pat taking on arts and books then between them. Would you both please go to the question room? OK, Rob, well, we uh, know about the book side of this category. What about art? Um, I did fine art MA and fine art uh, in BA. Um, I'm also a musician. Um, my weakest subject is going to be opera, so if there's an opera question, um, I might not do very well. Probably, <laughs> probably covered by music, I would uh, I, I would hope so. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's find out. Would you like to go first or second? I'd like to go first. Good luck then, Rob. Here's your first question. What term is used for the technique of applying paint by spraying and to describe the process of retouching photographs? Is it wind painting, breeze colouring or airbrushing? I'm pretty sure it's not uh, wind painting. That sounds very strange to me. Uh, breeze colouring also is not something a, a term I've heard of for uh, in terms of art. Um, I believe it's airbrushing. Yes, it is. Yes, airbrushing for your first point. And your first question, Pat. In July 2010, which art collector announced that he would donate his art gallery in Chelsea to the nation? Was it Charles Saatchi, David Roberts, Elton John? Um, I think he's got lots of <coughs> Emmons and Hursts and all that sort of uh, young British artist material. And it's Nigella Lawson's husband, Charles Saatchi. Charles Saatchi is correct. One each. And Rob, which comedian and author wrote a series of war memoirs that included the 1971 book Adolf Hitler, My Part in His Downfall? Harry Seacombe, Willie Rushton or Spike Milligan? Uh, whilst I'm a big fan of Harry Seacombe and Willie Rushton, uh, my dad used to read to me from this person's books. I believe it's Spike Milligan. Spike Milligan is absolutely right, yes. And Pat, the medal awarded by the Chartered Institute of Library and Information Professionals for outstanding illustration in children's books is named after whom? Walter Crane, Raymond Briggs or Kate Greenaway? Of those three options, um, there certainly is a Greenaway Prize connected with children's literature. There's the Carnegie Prize, the Greenaway Prize. People like Quentin Blake have one. I think it's Kate Greenaway. Greenaway Prize. It's the right answer. Well done, Pat. All square, a two all. And Rob, third question then. The 1875 painting entitled The Gross Clinic, depicting surgery on a leg, is one of the most notable works of which American painter? Is it James McNeil Whistler, Thomas Eakins, or Winslow Homer? I'm not that up with American painting. Um, I'm going to go for Thomas Eakins. 
That's the right answer. Yes. Well done, Thomas Eakins. You have three. Is another egghead going to go? Pat, you must get this. The narrative poem, Piers Plowman, attributed to William Langland, was written in which century? 14th, 16th or 18th? Hmm. I always have to convert century numbers into hundreds. Um, so 1300s, 1500s, 1700s. I, I think I'll dismiss the 18th. I think it's much earlier than that. So it's the 14th versus the 16th. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to go down the middle and say the 16th. 16th century for Piers Plowman. Uh, it was written in the 14th. 14th century. You're mowing down the eggheads, bookenders. Mowing them down. Another one bites the dust. You're in the final round, Rob. Would you both please come back and join your teams? Well... Eggheads, three brains gone from the final round. Can you pull it back from here? Have done it before, but looking good for the bookends. At this point, all of them still there. And our last subject before the final round is sport. And Michael David can play this. Wow. It, it's got to be. That well, should be me. It, yeah, I'm, I, I, think, I, think, I think I think we yeah. should. Yeah. yeah. I think we should, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. Mike. I'll take sport, do it. Okay, Mike, and who would you like to play? Daphne or Judith? Yes. I, th I think I, Judith. I think yeah. Judith yeah. On, yeah. on balance, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Judith. Yeah. Judith, please. All right. All right. It's going to be Mike and Judith contesting this last head-to-head. -head. Let's see how it goes. Into the question room, please, both of you. Well, Mike, maybe uh, three questions, maybe even two questions away from making this a clean sweep for the bookends. Would you like to go first or second? Uh, first seems to have worked pretty well for us, so I think I'll stick with that. Thanks, Dermot. Best of luck, Mike. Here you go who was England's goalkeeper against the USA in their first match of the 2010 FIFA World Cup in South Africa. Is it David James, Joe Hart or Robert Green? Uh, sadly, I know this because I'm a Norwich City fan and uh, when he conceded the goal, my son texted me to say, USA goal made in Norwich and it is Robert Green. <laughs> is that where he started out? Was that his yeah, first club? That was his first club. Uh, Robert Green is correct. Yes, a bit of a mistake by <laughs> Rob Green. But no mistake there by Mike in identifying him. So, Judith, first question. Which British athlete won gold medals in the 110-metre hurdles at the 1993 and 1999 World Championships? Colin Jackson, John Regis or Linford Christie? Um, I think that's Colin Jackson. It's the correct answer, yes. Mike, in which year did the golfer Corey Pavin win the US Open his first major title? 1985, 1995, or 2005? Okay, um, not sure how many Corey Pavin won. Not many. Uh, he's also playing on the seniors tour now, so on that basis, I'm going to discount 2005. Okay, my initial thought was 95. I, I think I had a feeling it might be a bit earlier than that, but that was my initial thought, so I'm going to stick with it. Say 95. Okay, going with that first inkling, that first instinct. It's the right answer as well. <laughs> Well done. Corey Pavin won the US Open in 1995. So, Judith, in the 2010 Formula One calendar, the European Grand Prix was staged on the streets of which Spanish city? Cadiz, Valencia or Bilbao? Um, I think that's Valencia. It's the right answer, yes. Well done, Judith. 2-2. Two -two. Mike. The brothers Frank and Andy Schleck from Luxembourg became famous as leading international competitors in which sport? Skiing, swimming or cycling? Um, as far as I'm aware, uh, they're both uh, cyclists, so cycling would be the answer. Yep, cycling is correct. And uh, Andy Schleck finishing uh, second in the 2010 Tour de France, didn't he, by a matter of seconds? 39 seconds, I think. 39 seconds, yep. OK, and that uh, means you've got to get this, Judith. Or Daphne is going to be a very lonely egghead. <laughs> Please, dumped it, dumped it. Which England cricketer achieved a record 26 Test victories as captain before his retirement? Michael Vaughan, Nasser Hussain, or Ian Botham? Oh, dearie me. Um, well, I don't think it was Nasser Hussain, because I have a feeling that England wasn't very good during that time. Um, Michael Vaughan was fairly recent. Were we any good then? Oh. Was Ian Botham captain 
I, I, I didn't know he was ever captain. Um, so it's a guess, I'm afraid. Ian Botham is such a hero. Maybe it was Ian Botham. Is that your answer? I'm afraid so. OK, Ian Botham. So is Daphne, because it's the wrong answer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it, Daphne? I don't know. I'd come from Michael Vaughan. Michael Vaughan, yes. Uh, Michael Vaughan, of course, the uh, Ashes victory in 2005. I'm sorry, Daphne. It means it is a clean <laughs> sweep. Mike, you're in the final round. You're not Judith. Would you both please come back and join your teams? So this is what we've been playing towards. It's time for the final round, which, as always, is general knowledge. But I'm afraid those of you who lost your head-to-heads won't be allowed to take part in this round. So, Chris, Barry, Pat, Judith, four eggheads, would you all leave the studio now, please? Well, bookends, I think this is only the seventh time that this has happened, where we've got uh, all the challengers playing one egghead. And uh, one of those previous times, it was... Was you there on your own, wasn't it, Daphne? Yes. You did manage to shore things up, so watch yes. out. Mm -hmm. Yes, dangerous <laughs> when on her own, dangerous when solo. <laughs> so, Gary, Mike, Gordon, David and Rob, you're playing to win the bookends of £1,000. Daphne, you're playing for something which money can't buy, the Egghead's reputation. As usual, I'll ask each team three questions in turn. This time the questions are all general knowledge. You are allowed to confer. You can talk to yourself, Daphne. <laughs> no change there, then. Bookends, the question is, are your five brains better than the Egghead's one? And Bookends, would you like to go first or second? We'd like to go first, please. All right, then, off we go. See where this journey takes us. First question to the Bookends. Which French term refers to the basic position or stance in fencing? Is it en garde, a propos or a point? A propos uh, literary, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like, it's not that. They always yeah. say on guard. It's on guard. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On guard. Yeah. 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 Okay. We think the answer is on guard. Plenty of uh, discussion there, making sure you get it. It's the right answer. Yes, on guard. The basic position in fencing. <sighs> Daphne, then. Which organisation's symbol created by Gerald Holtam was originally meant to represent an individual in despair with palms outstretched outwards and downwards? Is it CND, Amnesty, or WWF? I think that, I mean, Amnesty has a candle with the barbed wire around it. And WWF? Uh -huh. um, I think it's CND. So, going for CND? Yes. It's the right answer, oh. yes. OK. Book ends. In which year did Rosemary Franklin become the first UK entrant to take the title of Miss World? 1951, 1961 or 1971? I take it no one knows this. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't no. Knows there. I'm not um, a fan. <laughs> um, OK, well... 71 seems a little late. Yeah. Well, How yeah. long has it been going? No, it, no it's, it's still going in the 70s. Going, yeah, yeah, Definitely. it's been going for a long time. And, um, I kind of think so. I kind of think that if it had been in the 60s, yeah. it would be one of those things you'd hear because it'd be again something else that you know Britain in the 60s. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so I think it might have been, yeah. So on that, I mean, for what it's worth, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> been a guess. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. So I mean, it's, no, a, I it's a difficult one to judge because it's a time of mm. I don't. For some reason, I don't think it's 71. You don't think it's 71? No. I, I, I think I'd probably err towards 71. Oh, would you? Mm. Okay. Yeah. 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 No. yeah, I mean, you know. But if that's one against four. No, no, because, you know, I really just haven't got an, I haven't got, I haven't got a clue. That's no. Okay, shall we go for 71? Okay. Okay. Yeah, do it. Okay. Right then, uh, yes. 1971. Rosemary Franklin becoming the first UK entrant to take the title of Miss World, 1971. It's not the right answer. It's 1961. Rosemary Franklin, you ever heard of her, Daphne? Yes. Yeah. You knew that, did you? I would have guessed 61. Guess OK, well, Daphne, a chance for the lead, then. The International Airport at Tirana in Albania is named after which famous person? Is it Enver Hodja, Mother Teresa or Kemal Ataturk? Well, it wouldn't be Kemal Ataturk because he's Turkish. And, of course, um, 
Mother Teresa was born in Albania, but um, I've, I've not heard this. I'm going to guess at Enver Hodja. Okay, Enver Hodja, who of course was what, president for yes. many, many years. Wasn't yes. It? It's Mother Teresa. Oh, it's Mother Teresa, sorry. not Enver Hodja. So, uh, let's off for the bookend. Stays all square. Everything to play for, then. Can they beat the eggheads? The fashion designer, simply known as Valentino, was born with which surname? Sartori, Garavani, or Zenya? Again, I don't think... We're good on fashion, aren't we? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, mostly on fashion. Mm. First thing I, I thought was... Well, the, the one that jumps out is Sartori. Yeah, yeah well, Sartori. is that because of Sartori? Or... Yeah. Sartori <laughs> elegance. When, when, the, was, when was he? Do you know? Keep that. What, what era? So I'm, not, I'm unsure. Valentino. Yeah. I've no idea. Well, Valentino, Valentino, would, Valentino would, would suggest it was... It, you know, Valentino mm -hmm. may be named after, mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. Rudolf Valentino. Might have been the 40s. When, yeah. When, so, yeah. Actually, when He's saying Sartorial then came into... Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. Into yeah. sort of common usage. If it's not... Well, OK, if it's not Sartori, of the other two, who would you be more <laughs> inclined to? Garavani. Garavani. Kind of Valentino, 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 Valentino
the more we've all fallen in love with spending. And you know what? So have our politicians. If you've ever wondered how they spend your money or why they spend it in the way they do, follow me. Your money and how they spend it starts tonight at 9 on BBC Two and BBC HD. Lisa Faulkner's here on BBC Two with Air Hunters in half an hour. That's after we get more good quality toe-tapping Strictly Gossip from Zoe Ball.